ChatGPT has been all the craze right now, and I'm gonna show you five productivity hacks that you didn't know you can do with OpenAI's tool right now. Number one, be long but specific. So if I were to come to you with a list of bullet points of like, write an email to the client that is nice and informative about our recommendation to remove dollars from Notion advertising and move it to Obsidian, that would be long-ish but specific. So say they gave you more bullet points. It was your marketing manager and they're like, the incremental is $100,000. Make sure, and then they tell you like, make sure to emphasize how important this is to increase their peak season performance. And then they tell you one more thing, make sure you ask for their confirmation for their confirmation. So you just literally just do what the person tells you as long as possible. And then what you can do is tell it to write a what kind of email, because you're just saying an email, write a nice and informative email and then separated, separated by paragraphs and then the rest of it. Now, who is our, okay, about the Rise Productive teams. Now, write a nice informative email to who? To the client. And this is what happens when you have a really long prompt that is long, but also very specific. Watch this. Computing, 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 computing. I mean, are you kidding me right now? Look at this email. I just basically took bullet points someone gave me, made it specific. Boom. It needs to have all the data points that someone was looking for. You literally just type it out, say, and then start the prompt with write a, give it adjectives, say what the thing is, say how it's separated and who it's for, and then give the about section. And you'll be like, this is insane. Not just write me a good email, you know? Like you have to be very specific, but not too long. Another hack is that you can get video ideas or YouTube scripts from other content that exists. So say you're into productivity. Let's go to medium.com. The cool thing about medium is that you can do medium.com slash topic, and then let's do productivity. If you click on finding meaning here, or find a free one really quick, here's the human cost of the digital revolution. What if you just took this text, copied a couple parts of it and said, okay, write me five video topic ideas based on this text. Instead of you having to read it and think through it. Yep, that's what you got. Take large amounts of text and reappropriate the information that you would have looked into and you would have researched and then just have it do its thing. For example, then you could write, write me a YouTube script based on this. And now once again, it will be as specific as possible. So if I had said, make it longer, you know, if I had said like, make it a th certain amount of words up to a certain point, it would have expanded on it. If I had said, make it more storytelling, it would have expanded on it. But right now it's just taking the topic and doing all the Googling and stuff you would have and writing it out. Now you can put your own creative flair on this and you can expand upon it all you want. But I'm just saying, there are a lot of things that you look up and it's better to find long things to then put in here than take a title and do this. Now, the third thing is you should take ChatGPT and make it an app on your computer or on your phone. So I have a shortcut on my iPhone to just press it and then it opens up the Safari ChatGPT module, which would just make sense to me. Like instead of just having to always open Safari and then find it, just pressing it and making it a shortcut. But like in this situation, you notice, hey, what's going on here? Why is this, hey, this is like, is this an app? Did they make a ChatGPT app? No, guys, every single time there's an app that exists, I love showing this to people, but if I go to chatgpt.openai slash chat, if I go here, if you're in any sort of Chromium based browser, I go to more tools, you can create a shortcut that opens as a window. Then you click on this and press create and you got it. Or in this case, after it's been made, you can just press this and you'll see it like switches to it being like the app version. It's pretty insane because now I can just type chat GPT and then boom, quick and easy to use. Now, number four should be pretty obvious, but there are a bunch of apps that have chat GPT implementation in it right now. I'm making videos on them all the time. Taskade is a task management app that has it. Todoist is a task management app that has it. I did something like this in a video where it was like, make tacos tonight at 5 p.m., okay? I can add this task, I can go here, AI assistant, break down the task, and it could literally give me context on how to make tacos in subtasks. You can't tell me that that isn't a productivity hack. Or the fact that in here, I can take all this text with Notion AI and say, turn this into a script, turn these points into a script on how to use 
chat GPT effectively, then you can replace this and then say, okay, what if I take this again, AI assist, make this a 1000 word YouTube script. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. it was short. It needs some work. It is limited when it's through this AI, but sorry, through this API connection, but it does expand upon it and you can continuously try to get it to expand upon itself until it gets limited. Then you put more information in, then it expands a little. Just like what I'm about to talk with the last step. Did you know that ChatGPT has a Zapier and make.com module, which means you can use this with automations, which is pretty insane considering where automations can pull information from. And the fact that ChatGPT is only limited by the inputs. Stop thinking about it in the way that you're thinking about it and think about it in a new way. That'll blow your mind if you try it with automations. Just like it'll blow your mind if you check out this video on how to improve your productivity even more.